Welcome to Baby in the House, the podcast where we tackle all those tough parenting questions where everyone's got an opinion, from grandparents to neighbors to that nosy lady behind you at the line in the grocery store. Where we examine the research, share our experiences, and those of the families we care for. We give you the clarity and confidence you need to make the right choices for your baby and family. Without guilt, confusion, or analysis paralysis. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Baby in the House. I am super excited today because we're going to keep talking about baby issues. Today, Tina and I are going to tackle bathing and discipline for babies. So let's start with bathing because this is a really frequent question that I get asked, Tina, is like, how often to give the baby a bath. And uh, parents have no idea, like they get the bath in the hospital where the nurse helps them and then they're really nervous to go home and do it again. And nobody tells you like, how often should you bathe baby? So I'm wondering if you can enlighten us a little bit on what the science or research shows on bathing. There's plenty of different myths and thoughts about it. So I would love to hear what you have to say and I can share with you what I tell parents and if that jives or not. Yeah, I definitely want to hear what you have to say about this. Um, I totally identify with that moment. You know, you leave the hospital with that baby or that baby gets placed into your hands and, you know, you have to go home and figure out what to do. And babies are super slippery. And <laughs> that's <laughs> true. Off. And you, especially if you get a little too much, like, you know, soap going um, and you don't, you know, it's, it's just, you can't, kind of don't know what to do with your body even like do you use the sink do you use a small tub in the big tub so I'd love to hear some of your hacks on that but you know yeah first of all we should talk about when like so you know some parents are like you can just bathe whenever but really some of the science shows it's better to wait until what Phil the at at least like 24 hours I know is that what is that yeah, what the just, correct what answer you, is? What do you tell parents about like the umbilical cord falling off or after, or if, if the boy has been circumcised, like do they need to wait until the umbilical cord falls off and the circumcision has healed just to prevent infection or when can they give first bath? So I think, you know, after like in the hospital, usually babies get a bath within the first day or so. It varies by parent. Like some parents are very sticklers about no bath until baby goes home or something like that. I don't really care. I just wear gloves regardless. Yeah. Um, I will say that some of the more recent like immunology stuff says that maybe it's good to wait a little bit of time, um, before bathing, but it is certainly like a rite of passage that people usually do in the hospital before they go home for that first bath. And then with the umbilical cord, um, what we at least tell parents, there's been, there's been a whole history of what to do with an umbilical cord while it dries up and everything like that. They used to put this purple triple dye stuff on them. They used to say to use alcohol swabs, which then just like dry it out and it like, um, for, or, you know, it becomes like one of those petrified forest <laughs> trees stuck on there if you use that. Um, and, and lately, at least what we do is just tell parents, leave it alone. Don't submerge it in water. Um, like, don't do a bath where they're like submerged, but that'd be pretty far for a baby to be submerged anyway. So I don't see a lot of parents feeling super comfortable um, with that anyways. Uh, and otherwise, just kind of do a bath, like a sponge bath with a warm washcloth. Um, and that's what we tell parents until the umbilical cord falls off. The umbilical cord usually falls off around two weeks of life or thereabouts. Um, it's like decaying flesh. It's yeah. like um, not pretty. stinky. Yeah. Even normally, like there's, there's some really rare infections that you can get around the umbilical stump and everything like that. And parents worry about that, but the vast majority are just kind of stinky because it's like decaying flesh. Yeah. Well, and so of course, you know that the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that exactly what you just said, sponge baths until that stump falls off or until the circumcision is primarily healed. Because if you submerge them, you can they can get infected, right? But really what the science says is for babies, the, you know, really their first full year of life, um, that two to three times a week should be plenty to keep newborn um, clean as long as we are keeping them, um, you know, change, like cleaning the diaper area when we change them thoroughly, um, then just giving them a bath two to three times. Now, 
the science is saying the reason we might not want to give daily baths it's not gonna really harm them, except that they do have sensitive skin. And so it can really dry out their skin, particularly if you're using soaps that can be a little harsher or things like that. So, um, however, um, you know, bath time is really a delightful thing as kid, as babies get older, <laughs> for most babies. Um, right. And it's a really can be a great part of the, of the routine, but really that first year, their skin's a little more sensitive. But if you have other kids in the house or pets who like to, be dirty and snuggle with your baby. You know, there might be times you go, okay, well, we've already had three baths this week, but we need one more because you are covered in dog saliva or whatever <laughs> it is. Um, but I think, that, you know, so generally the rule of thumb is two to three times a week for the first year and then use your judgment. I think um, one other thing that's sort of germane and could be a whole other episode really is about being too, um, too sterile and too clean. Right. That's right. not good for our babies. Like really, um, right. There are microorganisms in dirt and, um, you know, all kinds of things that germs in our environment are really good for the immune system. And, and in fact, um, one of the things I discovered in the bottom line for baby research was that parents who pick up the pacifier and lick it as opposed yeah. to washing it, those babies have lower rates of asthma and allergies. And so it's just really interesting that germs aren't all bad. Right. And I think, you know, like the hygiene hypothesis and that whole idea of like, there's more allergies and more infections and everything like that. If you think about the the history of human evolution, it wasn't until the last hundred years that we were nearly as clean as we were for the million years that preceded that. And so our bodies are used to being around dirt and microorganisms and bacteria and fungus and viruses and all of those sorts of things. And all of a sudden they are in this sterile, like literally sterile environment where they're getting, you know, they're either breastfed or they have these sterile bottles and they're, they're not being exposed to all of those things. So of course the immune system gets revved up and we have more allergies and more um, infections and all those sorts of things just because we're more naive to all of those different organisms that we're usually exposed to for the previous millennia, eons of human evolution. And so as the bath giver in our house, I use that um, excuse quite often to push bath night to one more night down the road because we have five kids. I mean, ha bathing a baby is a lot of fun, as you said, but once you get a bunch of them, <laughs> it gets a little bit less fun as like you're like yelling at them not to get water all over the floor right. and splashing. And um, so I do agree with you completely that two to three times per week, it can be a part of your nightly routine. If that's something that is really important to you and you enjoy it and baby enjoys it, go for it. Yeah. I've never um, told parents like you're bathing your baby too much. Right. And I've never on the flip side said you need to bathe your baby more often because parents just do those things on their own. <laughs> and if they're not bathing their baby, it's probably yeah. because like they're stressed and everything like that. And honestly, I, I can't even tell really unless they have like visible dirt, which babies don't yeah. get dirt on them. I mean, parents ask me like, how often should we give the baby a bath? I'm like, well, once or twice, three times a week, unless you go outside and like he plays in the sandbox or something. And yeah. we all just laugh about that. Yeah. Um, and once you yes. start eating solid foods um, or baby food, they can get really messy. So that, at that sure. point, I want to kind of ramp up your, uh, cause you know, they get all those like the little folds of their fat little necks and their little oh, yeah. holes, they get like food residue in there. Okay. I have one really good hack for okay. bath time. For parents. Okay. Um, and you might have a good one too. Or I have a ton of bath hacks because okay. I like to do we the quickest those. baths possible. We should, yeah, we should, we should, uh, we should throw those in. So one of my favorite baby gifts to give is one of those kneeling gardening bench um, pads. You know, totally. It's like 12 inches by like six inches, those little foam pads, because when you're bathing young children, you are constantly on your knees and most parents fold up a towel. Um, yeah. But these gardening benches are a lot more comfortable. They have a lot more um, sponge to them. So it's a lot easier on your knees um, and they rinse off really well and dry really quickly. So that's one of my genius. Yeah. Those are meant for outdoors. That's a great idea. I never actually I'm thought of that in particular. You can pay, get it for like a dollar. I mean, they're just they're yeah. super cheap. So Good, good the, that is great because I hate kneeling on the bathtub or like on the ground by the bathtub because it's not comfortable. It's not like carp. I mean, obviously it's not carpeted and um, you, then you're getting your towels all wet and they're splashing everywhere. I mean, 
you can tell I'm not a super fan of baths, even though that is my <laughs> evening job at home. Um, the the super quick hack that I use is people get like all sorts of loofahs and um, uh, washcloths and you know devices to like spread soap on baby. And I have found that babies don't get that dirty. And so all I do is squirt some like baby shampoo on their head, rub that in, and then use their head as their loofah, and just grab some soap and then rub it on the rest of their body. And then you have no, you don't create any loofah mess, you don't create any washcloths, and then you just rinse them off um, <laughs> and you move forward from there. But that is that is how we keep bath time simple is we just use their I hair as their, their loofah. So. I think, you know, bath time can be so sweet with siblings too. Now, of course, there are the moments oh, yeah. where, you know, there are the little floaties and bath time is over. You know, there's there's all kinds of little chaos in those times. <laughs> it really can be such sweet um, play times. Um, yes. What about, and I think it's probably worth mentioning, for some babies, being in a bath or a shower is really uncomfortable. These are babies who mm. maybe have a little bit more um, sensory sensitivities. Um, you know, oftentimes when I've uh, worked with families and I, I work with occupational therapists who've taught me a lot about this, um, that, you know, oftentimes when kids, when later we discover that they have some sensory processing challenges, parents will have re reports of, gosh, they always hated baths. And so we had to do showers or we had to do sponges right. or my, my kid hated showers. Um, or we had to start by putting them in the bathtub before the water came on, or we had to have the water fully in before they got in. So just know every baby has sensory preferences about how loud the noise is. drains and water going out of the drain. That kind of can be terrifying for some babies. They're afraid right. their toys are, or toddlers and older kids. They're afraid their toys are going to go or that they're going to get sucked down. So just know that's common for kids to have sensory preferences around noise and temperature and um, those kinds of things. Any, any thoughts on that? Agree completely. I do see from time to time kids or parents tell me that they hate bath time and they scream and I tell them, you know, limit the number of baths if that's an issue or figure out what your child does like. Some like to be held and like take kind of a shower with mom or dad, which is totally fine. Um, some just kind of want a sponge bath sort of thing or with washcloths. Babies don't get that dirty. So if you could just get them a little bit soaked and sudded and washed off, that is totally fine. And I think just kind of finding what your baby likes and where their preference level is. And you're right. I made the mistake once we were um, at a friend's or no, we were at uh, in-laws and our kids are very like, just dump the bucket of water on their head. And so I was just like, it was a bunch of cousins in the bathtub together and just going around the, down the line and like blasting them with water on their heads. And then one of them this is going. <laughs> did not appreciate that at all. They were used to laying down gently and just kind of having the water like washed out very gently. I did not appreciate that at that moment. Um, and, and it caused quite a stir. Um, I mean, we all got over it and everything like that, but it wasn't something that I had considered. So yes, each baby is different in their preference for baths. Some kids, some of our kids like the shower, like ridiculously hot and some are very sensitive to that too. So just kind of finding out what your baby likes playing around, um, you have plenty of opportunities to kind of adjust variables to see what they they like best. That's exactly right. And if we force things, it often can amplify fear and reactivity. So just, I love that idea. And that's kind of probably good advice for most things is to really take right. to your baby's preferences and follow their lead as best you can while keeping them safe. And you're right, babies don't get all that dirty. Just figure it out. You and your, your baby, the dance of trying to learn about each other in the world together and figuring it out. Yes, it is an endearing moment, though, especially like giving them their first bath and those baths when they're like a tiny little baby. And then with siblings and those sorts of things, like I, I talk a lot of crap about bath time because I on a day to day basis, it's not always the most fun, but it is a sweet moment. It's special and um, you can enjoy it for the most part. <laughs> Yes. And then they go away. My boys, right. it wouldn't be appropriate for me to bathe my, my teenagers. So, um, right. That would not, <laughs> yeah, that would be a whole other episode, but, um, but yeah, I think, I think, you know, the, they are, it's, it's, and at that time of day, you're exhausted. It's, it's a really chaotic time, um, that can be full of sort of a ripe moment for meltdowns for kids and for parents. So, um, for sure. But, but overall, in general, they tend to be really memorable moments of, of parenting. Oh, for sure.